So in this video, I'm going to be unboxing my Only Games crates that were very kindly sent over to me by the team at Only Games. It's not a sponsored video or anything, but I've never actually handled any of their physical prints before. So it's kind of exciting to see what a big old professional company like Only Games does in terms of 3D printing. So let's get on with it. So in case you're not familiar with Only Games crates, basically Only Games is like the spin-off of my mini factory and they do physical printed miniatures. So you can go on there and you can buy basically loads of physical printed miniatures and get them shipped to your door. So that way if you don't have a 3D printer and you like some of the stuff that other creators are doing out there, then you can pick up those miniatures without having to you know, buy your own 3D printer. So in case you're unfamiliar with what Only Games crates are, they're basically a subscription service by Only Games. Uh, they're £10 a month, either for a sci-fi one or for a fantasy one. And you get a selection of miniatures sent over to you in their little crates. And they buy different creators each month and as part of that, you obviously get a few miniatures that are sent over to you. But you also get a discount from that creator as well. So if you like what you see from these miniatures, you also get a discount. And you get a painting masterclass, which is nice. And you get some discount off some paints as well. So it's always worthwhile bearing that in mind. Now, these are all meant to be professionally printed. I'm interested to see what the quality is like. And like I said, there's a mix of fantasy or sci-fi, depending on what you want to go for. And the first thing I'll say is that I feel like the Only Games crate side of things has never been looked at by anybody in marketing at all. I have it quickly up on screen, but if you were unfamiliar with what Only Games crates are and you went to the website to find out more, I don't think you're really going to find out much information there. Like, I've looked at it before, before they'd contacted me about making this video, and I had no idea what crates were because it didn't really, it's not that clear. And I don't know if that's because I'm familiar with my mini factory, which do 3D prints in terms of like STLs and everything. So when I go to Only Games, I still see them as the same thing. And it almost makes it look like that £10 a month is going to get you the STLs rather than the actual physical prints. Because then if we go on to, I don't know, like the fancy one, it's not overly clear what you're going to get. I mean, it shows you a bit of an outline of these by is it Art Villain Games. But then you go to description, shop 3D product, product information, genre fantasy, grid size 32mm, and official content basically says that you know, the creator will get a royalty from it. it. doesn't say anywhere what you're gonna get. It's just weird. It completely needs a revamp. So hopefully the miniatures will be much better than the descriptions and advertising on the website because that needs to be fixed because otherwise no one's ever gonna have any idea what the hell they're buying. So editing Sean here, I went away afterwards. I did actually find the main landing page which I showed earlier on in the video. And this shows a lot more information. So it shows you what you're actually getting with Only Games Crate. It gives you an overview of all the bits you're going to get there as well. It is still a bit confusing. There's like areas that it could be improved. Like if I go on to fantasy at the moment, those fantasy descriptions are still the same. So it still just shows the description, shop 3D product, product information, genre fantasy, grid size 32. Didn't tell me how many miniatures I'm getting with that fantasy package. So there's still areas for improvement there. And also it has the wrong miniatures linked in there versus the ones you're going to get. So, you know, just kind of bear that in mind. So there's bits there, obviously, where I guess some teething issues and stuff like that. Okay, so with that little rant aside, let's have a look at the miniatures we get here. Got like a little warrior. And what I'll do is once I've um, packaged all of these, the ones that I like the most, I'll give them a prime and a paint. And I'm going to try and do something different than I've done before. I'm going to try and follow along to their painting masterclass. Or at least I'll start by following along and I'll probably give up and just paint with some speed paints. But I want to kind of see what they look like once you've got some paint on there, because obviously with resin, sometimes it's hard to pick up the detail and everything on camera, but I'll do my best to see how well these show up. Also, just realizing the backdrop that I've got, the mat that I'm using is probably a really bad idea. <laughs> so here are the fantasy ones. And let's just make sure let's pop that into focus so you can see it a bit more. Here we go. So it should be showing up on the camera there. The, cam the quality is really nice. Like, it's really nice. I mean, there are, are they support? So it's still got, where's my knife? We still got some supports on there. There's some bits of support material there, for example. But all in all, the quality is really, really good. Let me just try and keep that in focus. So you can see, obviously all the details come out really nicely. You've got some really sharp crisp edges, like the notches and bits on the shield there. That really shows up nicely. One thing I'm noticing just as I'm handling it, it's a nice flexible resin, which is a massive benefit because anybody who's been 3D printing for some time knows it can be really hard to dial in your resins and get them so that they don't just snap. 
So they're obviously using quite nice resin there, um, which you'd expect, you know, obviously they're a massive company doing this, but the detail's really, really nice. Um, there's no sort of like areas that look like they need more cleaning or anything. Just that where they kind of missed off a bit of the support, but not a big deal. Next one. This one off the bat, I mean, there's, there's quite a bit of shininess there, but that doesn't feel tacky, which is good. It just probably where well, it's been, I don't know, some weird cleaniness. Again, some more support material there, which hasn't been taken off, but not a big deal. That all yep, snaps off easy enough. So they do need a little bit of cleaning. Um, but again, very nice detail. All the chainmail, for example, it's got all the detail there. It's like not overexposed. Good amount of flexibility. Look like his little skeleton arm moves around there quite a lot. And that's good because, like again, skeletons and stuff that are really thin, like bones, swords, stuff like this. I personally wouldn't normally print something like this because it can be so thin and flimsy. But actually, it's a quite nice resin, very flexible, which is, which is good. And then we've got this. Ooh, wow, look at that. There's so much give with that. Now we've got that. Yeah, there's a lot of give on that. So that's good. And again, this is another example of something that normally I wouldn't print just because it would be so flimsy. It's great, like in digital sculpting, incredible. Like the artist has done something amazing with that, but then when it actually transpires into actual printing, oh, it can just sometimes be a nightmare. But when you get the right resin and the right settings, everything, that's really good. There's a lot here that still needs cleaning. So as I call the uh, bit of support material there around the cape, for example. On the back, there's um, this kind of crusty bit and he's taken off there. Some more support material there. There, there. There's still a bit of cleaning required for that, but all in all, they look good, like really good. So let's move on to the sci-fi ones. And buff it above, bum. Pop these only crates. So I think there's five sci-fi dwarves in these ones. So let's have a look. It's interesting as well. So in terms of the packaging, they literally just come in a cardboard box, and this is it. So uh, they also have a leaflet in there as well, just saying, you know, here's your discount for your paints and here's your QR code as well to watch the masterclass. But that's about it. Um, it's not bad. Obviously, it keeps costs down in terms of shipping and stuff like that, but you know, nothing overly fancy. Okay. So first little space dwarf. Again, like the sci-fi ones. Good quality. Sure I've got him there. Yeah. Um, still, again, like the other ones, you've got all the support material there that still needs cleaning off. So that will just need kind of like hacking away. The good thing is, you can tell that they're cured at least. Because <laughs> otherwise, that'd be an absolute disaster. Because those, they like snap right off. So the support material is still really brittle and just snaps away cleanly. But they still feel nice and durable, which is good. And again, good amount of detail on there. Definitely not overexposed. Things like these little parts in the gun. So the bits that I'm looking at are bits that when you don't get the settings dialed in, you notice like if they're overexposed. So the bits on the gun, for example, around the barrel here, around like the ammunition cartridge here, on the barrel here, for example, you've got these nice like rivets and holes. It's a good amount of depth. Um, nice, clean, crisp lines and stuff like that. On the back here, like these vents, for example, they look really clean and crisp. Hopefully it's picking up on camera as well. But sometimes when you're 3D printing and you have just your exposure a little bit too high, they start to almost blur the line between that you don't get those nice crisp lines. Hopefully I'm making some sense there. So all in all, the, the print quality is really good. Just nice to see. So I will speed through these next ones and we'll move on to the painting stage. Not too sure which ones are going to paint. I will have a look at the master classes just to kind of get an idea of what they do and some of the color schemes and stuff they offer. See if any of those inspire me and then I'll do a bit of painting and then I will be back for the next bit. But so far, pretty impressed with these. Ooh. I do find it interesting that some have bases. It's like this one has bases. Um, again, support material just on the bottom there. I think the only thing that's annoying is that the support material, it doesn't take that long to clean it off. So it almost feels like 
them being missed is a bit of a shame. But some have bases, and I'm guessing this one has a base with him because he's themed in such a way as he would have to stand on it. So it would be really annoying, actually, if you didn't get the base for him. But then that means the rest of the bases for your miniatures won't be themed in the same way. So you have to get your own bases and then build them up the same way. So I don't know if that's a good decision or a bad decision, but just bear that in mind. You don't seem to get all the bases with all the miniatures, so yeah. Right, anyway, moving on to the painting bit. I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I went to check out the uh, masterclass, and unfortunately, there isn't one yet done for any of these guys, the sci-fi or the, oh my god, the sci-fi or the fantasy. We survived that. So I decided I will do my own painting class for these. Now, it's not going to be a masterclass. It's going to be a painting amateur class, but here we go. So I did the sci-fi dwarves, and actually, these turned out really, really nicely, I think. So the first thing I did was I put a little bit of cork on all of their bases, and then I spray them all with my airbrush with just black. Now, you could do this with either a rattle can, an airbrush. You could paint on your black primer. It's just basically getting some black on there. And then I used my airbrush to get some barbarian flesh all over the top, because I figured flesh tones was going to be the thing that was going to be like the most consistent thing throughout them. Again, you don't need an airbrush for this. You could dry brush that on there. You could get a rattle can and put that on there. You could paint it on there. You could do it whatever way you like. But I figured I wanted to go for that Xenophil Prime, basically having a lighter color from above over that black primer. And for me, I wanted to go for that flesh tone. Once that was done, it was just over to traditional brushes. And for the most part, I used some Army Painter Speed Paints for pretty much the whole thing. And also some Citadel Contrast Paints as well. The first thing I did was a familiar pink for all of the hair. And I wanted to go for something different for this because obviously they're like squats and dwarves. And normally it's all fire red hair. And to be fair, I really like that fire red hair. It's just a traditional thing that you see on pretty much all dwarf sculpts. But I wanted to do something different. So I want familiar pink. And actually, this came out really nice. It's a nice contrasty color with the rest of it. And the good thing about this is it just pulls a bit more attention away from like the flesh tones and stuff like that that we've already used on the model. So I was really happy with the way that turned out. Next, it was moving across onto the armor. And I was going to go for either like black or just some silver armor and play around with that. But then I went with burnt moss, which is this nice like green type camo. And it just looks quite nice over this. It doesn't draw attention because we've already got some quite bright colors on there. And I already have some other colors that I want to throw into the sculpt later on. So I wanted to keep it kind of muted, but not take away too much from the other details on there. This ends up looking a little bit Halo-esque or Doom Guy. I think, and the sculpts really lean into that as well because they've got these big chunky boots. Some of that armor does look quite doom guy. And then throwing that burnt moss on there really adds to that look as well. Next up, it was all things like the brownie bits. So any like the straps that are on there, they've got these almost like braces that they're kind of wearing down around the butt and on their legs, straps that are around like the wrist and stuff like that. So for this, I use some ruddy fur and I just kind of pop that on there and that ends up looking quite nice as well. It goes nicely with the skin tone that we're gonna have on there later on. And again, doesn't pull away too much detail from the rest of the sculpt. Next was for another pop of color. And some of them have like these t-shirts on. They've all got this like fabric around the trousers and stuff like that. And at first I was gonna do all of this, that same burnt moss, but then I figured it would just kind of blur and blend together. So I wanted another pop of color. So I used magic blue for this and popped it on there. And I think this ends up looking quite nice. It almost has this denim -y look. So they've kind of got a bit of double denim going on which, you know, fashionable in some places. But again, it just adds another nice splash of color in there that which really helps to kind of go with that nice familiar pink that we've already got. Stands out against that burnt moss armor as well. It's simple, it's easy, but it just adds something a little bit more, a little bit more flair for our pink haired guys. Going across onto things like the weapons and anywhere else where you want some metallics, I use some broadsword silver for the weapons and just kind of sloshing that over there. And that's a speed paint, but it's a really nice, consistent metal that just goes down very nice. You don't have to put multiple coats down. And it's just easy to apply and I really, really like it. And you wouldn't think having a speed paint metallic would work, but it does, which is always nice. For any of the energy bits, so some of them have these like canisters on the back of them. One of them's got the flamethrower. I use contrast paint magma drop flame for this. And I really like this. It's a really nice, easy to apply. It's obviously like a contrast paint, but it's got really good consistency and really, really good coverage. So it's really bright shiny and looks fantastic on these and then for things like the grenades i did them in bile red contrast paint again another great contrast paint for fantastic coverage and being easy to apply so going back to all the flesh obviously there's still some things to be done because at this stage we only have that initial base cut that we put down with the airbrush so for this i use reichland flesh shade but you don't want to apply it straight out of the pot because otherwise 
it becomes really, really dark and you don't actually get that much contrast from it. You just lose all of those base layers you've already applied. So I tend to mix this down. It's normally like one drop of Reichland Flesh Shade to two drops of water or two drops of medium, whatever you're using. And then I put that on there and it becomes a really nice thin layer. So it doesn't do too much darkening of that already base coat you've got, but it runs into all the recesses, so like all the bulges of the muscles on these guys. And it really gets into all the crevices there and just helps to get a nice bit of detail. And then for the bases, I just use some Imperial Fist Contrast Paint and slosh that over there to get this kind of like nice yellow sandy look. So the next stage, I take some Null Oil and I'm quite choosy with where I put this. So I put it all over like the metallics and the weapons and just slosh it on for that bit. But everywhere else on the model, I just try and pin wash some different areas. So around like the hair and where, basically where the hair kind of connects to like the forehead and stuff like that, I get some in there just to get some, I guess, separation between those parts on the gloves, for example, just around some of the bits in the armor as well, just pop some non oil in there. The next stage is like my speed paint hack. And some people really like this and some people say this is a bit of a pointless step, but I think it's a nice, easy way to get some highlights on there. So make sure the whole model is nice and dry and then grab yourself a dry brush and some cream paint. Get that cream dry brush all over the model, even on the metallics and stuff like that. Don't worry about going too heavy with this and get it on there. Make sure you really concentrate on that base as well because at the moment it looks very yellow and this will help to knock it back to a more sandy color. Once that is done, we're going back to those original colors that we used and we're gonna mix them into a nice glaze consistency. So basically for this, my recipe is taking that original speed paint or contrast paint and mixing it with four drops of speed paint. So one drop of the original color, with four drops of that speed paint and then glaze it back over all of those original colors. So we've got the pink hair, put the pink back on there. We've got the blue, for example, getting the blue back on there. You know, you get the gist. And what this does is it helps to ever so slightly darken some of those shadows you've already got. But the biggest thing it does is where you've got that cream dry brush and it's picked out all those edges and highlights and stuff like that, is it tints those bits that are currently like a cream and it knocks it back into the color that you've got on the base. And it's just a nice, easy hack and cheat to get some highlights on there. It also helps to remove any of that chalkiness that you might have from your dry brushing stage as well. And I just think it gives a nice easy blend and very quick effective way of speed painting and highlights. Once I did that, it was back over to the bases where I added some tufts, rimmed and black, and then I was done. And honestly, I'm really happy with how this turned out. There's just a nice pop of color on all of these. I think they look a little bit different than any of the other dwarves that I've done in the past. And all in all, I'm really happy with these. So I guess the main thing you'll be asking is, is this worth it? And for £10 a month, I think it is. They're really good, well-detailed models. They're durable, they're flexible. I'd say they're ever so slightly better quality than some of the consumer level printers that I've used at home. But the big thing where they are better is the flexibility in the resin. So even though I've had some really flexible resins, I think these are just a little bit better than what I've been able to do. And I would trust these a lot more. When I paint, I drop models and I've dropped these a lot. And as you saw at the start, I was bending all those staffs and like swords and everything else. And they seem to be really durable and flexible. So that's a big win. And obviously the core part of the product is the miniatures. That's what you're here for at the end of the day. You want some good quality miniatures that look good, that feel good, that are good quality, and will last. And these definitely offer that, so big win there. The rest of the product is a little bit incomplete in my experience. Like I mentioned, it's the 28th of June today and the Painting Masterclass isn't available. And as a general consumer, if I was buying this as a package to also get my Masterclass, to buy some of those two thin coat paints as well, where I get my discount off of and then go through that Masterclass with, and it's not available, that's kind of disappointing, but that's stuff that can be worked on. The core is right at the moment. So I'm really interested to see how this product evolves over time. We'll see, you know, they get the website up to speed and they make sure it's actually clear what you're getting and they get everything else in line with the quality of these miniatures. That'd be fantastic. And what's really nice to see is if you go to Only Games and you're going to buy some of their miniatures, this is basically the quality that you're going to be getting. And that's great because these are really good quality miniatures and I'd be happy with my purchase if I bought these. So all in all, Definitely interested to see how this product evolves over time. It's worthwhile checking out if you're interested in the creator because you also get that discount for that creator as well. There's definitely things they could do to improve it. And I think the big thing that will probably be a bit of a sticking point is there's not necessarily consistency in theme. If I'm buying a subscription of miniatures, I kind of want to know that maybe every single month I'm going to get some Space Dwarves, for example, or I'm going to get some Skeletons, for example, and like build out my army that way rather than having things that are going to be completely random. So I don't know how well that's going to stick, but again, that's all down to the audience and the taste and everything else. So thanks so much to Only Games for sending this over to me. If you've got any questions in the comments below, let me know. Let me know what you think of the paint scheme. I really like the pink hair. I think it's different. And I actually really like the way these turned out. So thanks so much for watching. 
Hopefully, I will see you in the next one. Stay safe. Bye.